guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. You are speaking to your girl, Elizabeth Colon, also known as Miss Fit One. You are going to be amazed and surprised, and your ears will be dazzled by the one and only Kita. Hi, hey, girl. Hi. Hey guys! How are you? I am blessed and well and can't complain. Amen, amen. You look beautiful. Well, you know, what do you tell a person that's quarantined other than that? <laughs> <laughs> the lies you tell, but I'm going to rock with you on that one because I know that my eyelashes are, 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 are actually experiencing social distancing as we speak. So I had to throw a little lash on and a little eyeliner, wake yeah, myself yeah. up a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you yeah, look amazing. Me too. No, I have to do the same thing, girl. And you know, I don't I don't even know how to do it. So it's all jacked up. So I'm glad that y'all can't see me, my eyelash crooked. But that's all. I'm gonna keep talking though, because they don't know what that look like. They don't, and they don't have to. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, but hey, mm -mm. we come to the party all natural, so that's all that matters. That's right. We're gonna rock it. Hold our head yeah. up. We be like, yeah, this is how I look and you know what I'm saying? That's right. So tell me, what have you been doing in this pandemic? What have you been doing? Um, well, for the, most, for the most part, I've really been focusing on, can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Well, during this pandemic, you know, it's crazy because it, originally I just assumed it was going to be the original like two weeks. But, you know, during this pandemic, I really looked at it as a divine timeout that we all needed. Um, not just as human beings, but I feel like the earth needed it. I feel like the, the energy and the toxicity in the, in, in the environment needed it. Um, I felt like as a, a unit, you know, from coast to coast, we just needed to slow down and take a step back. And, and, and that, you know, a lot of people have lost their lives and have lost loved ones to this horrific um, virus. Uh, but it's definitely awakened lot of people who've been asleep on the things that matter and that's what this right. this this time alone in this interest I'm not alone I'm lying I'm not alone I'm here bunkered up with family but safely bunkered up and it just allowed me to kind of do a self-check um and when I come out of this I want to be a better version of myself I love that you know because um that's my whole platform right is is fit lifestyle and Absolutely. You just said everything that you need to say. Now, you can leave. I mean, you got to be a better you. You said being focused, and it's a, a natural time out, which is exactly what I feel, too. If we don't come out better than when we went in, we're doing something wrong. Thank you. Absolutely. Something mm -hmm. ain't right. Something ain't right. And it's not to say that you have to come out with the cure for cancer, that, that you need to come out, you know, with, with shredded abs or, right. you know, you need to come out creating a new financial stream of revenue. I think the bigger part is, are you coming out differently than what you went in? And if you are, then check that box of success. Amen. And, and I think, I think you said it all right there. Check that box. Look, let me ask you this. How do you start your day? Cause I know you are a busy, busy woman. How do you start your day? Let me tell you something. The crazy part is, is I really have had a struggle before this trying to find my place of Zen and solace. And, and it was difficult because things were moving a million miles a minute. Right. But what I've been doing is, you know, with everything kind of being in a space of, 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 not, of, of involuntarily not moving, it right. allowed me to be still um, and find meditation. I never okay. had a chance to meditate. So um, I've been doing some meditation virtually with this amazing, you know, uh, female power, Debbie Brown. She's had Debbie Brown, Debbie Brown, D-E-V-I. She's had this amazing um, challenge for people to just kind of go into their own light in their own space. So I didn't really know how to meditate because every time I close my eyes, I'm thinking about what I need to do. I get to do the dishes. I got to go to the bank. I got to go do this. <laughs> I got to make sure that I sign up this and do that. So my mind has actually needed a, a, a timeout. And um, I've given myself that every day to try to find a, a, a place of Zen. Even if I go to the my walk-in closet, that's I will go there. Um, right. and the right. other thing, too, is that I've actually made it a point to do things in my day that I typically wouldn't do. So, for example, um, I'm not a workout person because I don't really have time and 
Trust me, you know, Mm -hmm. right? I know you missed that. I don't have time, but I used to love to work out. I used to be a dancer. I used to love to, I went to a performing arts school. I actually went to the same performing arts high school as Nicole Scherzinger from the Pussycat Dolls. And I had had lost that part of my, that dance her, honey. That dance her. Okay. Dance her. So uh, speaking of being fit, I had to find that fitness you know, space in me and, and, and get to moving. And at first that was the part I needed to. So I'd been hopping on different people's lives and club fee fit. I love it's, um, at Felicia Walker. Um, she has this thing called club fee fit. It's a mix of Zumba with hip hop along with strengthening your core. I got to get on there. Get on it, honey. It is I a do. And Jackson fell in it too. Uh-uh. Um, yeah. And I did club, I do club fee fit. It's free. She has a free course that she does twice a week. And then also she has a paid course where it's, I think $5 to be a part of it, where you can actually uh, come inside and she'll help you personally with some of the other club fee fitters. So I that's love that. great. And I love it. it. I, I've been sweating these edges out. Do you hear me? Okay. But they look good girl. All of it. Yeah, but thank you. boo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Cause it, the thing is, is, you know, a lot of people don't like to work out. That's, mm-hmm. that's very common, mm-hmm. but when you find something that you like to do, it's not a big deal. Not a big deal. And in the repetition of it, I realized that there are, the, the module of success isn't how well you do something, it's how often you do it. Correct, right. That's my, literally my whole thing is, I want you to be fit, was that focus, intentional, mm-hmm. and transforming. You understand what I'm saying? Woo, I like that. That focus, is it. Transforming, look, come on, look, look, look the shirt, look the shirt. Oh, you got your shirt. I love it. I love it. Yes. I love, I love that. it. So what you guys don't know, if y'all missed the interview that I did with uh, Kita for Sheen Magazine, she had on her shirt from Create Her. Oh, um, her. It was everything. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to get that shirt. <gasps> there it is. Yes. Mine's you know, in the mail. Without promotion, honey. That's important. That's exactly That's it. I cannot yes. wait till mine come, okay? I'm so excited. Thank you for your support. Oh, I got to get absolutely. one of my focused, intentional, transformative uh, uh, gear as well. Okay, girl, because I really believe in wearing your mantra, right? Wear it. We, we need absolutely. visual clues all the time. All yes. the time. And if speaking she wear of- this shirt, I got about three of the same ones that look like she's going to rock it until I need to wash it. Thank you. I got different <laughs> colors. I'm going to just put on that. Next time it's going to be purple. You know what there I'm saying? You know. There you go. <laughs> I got different colors, but that's I exactly it. it. I, I love how you said you got something that you really enjoyed to do, which was dancing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you've been really busy. What's your project that you're working on now? Are you going to talk about her? Let me talk about her, honey, and <laughs> her in the moment. Well, ah. the crazy part is, and, and I just loved our interview we did. It's amazing because... You know me. You already know how I am, girl. I had run behind the, the day before. I was like, I got to move this to tomorrow. Uh, you know that. That's my favorite thing. I, I, I've i had a problem with putting others before myself. And because I'm in um, my professional career as a publicist, I am the gatekeeper of everyone else's lives. I am right. the therapist. I am the, you know, the the motivator. I am the, you know, the organizer. Uh, I'm also mm-hmm. the person that helps brand their career in the spotlight outside of their creative spaces. I actually mold it so that, that you see them in the media and the spotlight. Right. And on the other side of that, I became a mother. And I had a very hard uh, journey into motherhood um, I had fertility issues and, you know, right. I was not sure if I was going to be able to have a child at all. So make mm-hmm. sure ladies, one of the things I will say is if you're a professional woman and you haven't had kids, it's okay. Cause I wanted to wait. And when I did wait, I didn't know if I had waited too late. So I tell women all the time, go get you a, uh, make sure you go do a, um, um, an ultrasound for your uterus. It's a uterus ultrasound that you do to count your, um, follicles. Wow. That, um, allow, yeah. That allow the, the doctor to see how many egg follicles you have which will show you where you are on the spectrum of either having not enough or you better hurry up and and get them and I'm an advocate for freezing eggs so that being said my journey as a professional woman was focused for so long that I put my personal life on hold and when I did become a mother finally after the struggle right I put nurturing my care and my Mm -hmm. love into my child as most mothers do right as we do 
as we do. And mm -hmm. I lost her. I lost myself. And so one day I was looking at this Mother's Day card that was on the man uh, on my dresser. You know how we leave those cards out, child. It probably was Mother's Day in May. It probably was all <laughs> this card was still up. You know, this card was still up, honey. I had earned that mother title. I was leaving that card up all year. No, so still looked, a mother. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So mm -hmm. I looked at the card that my 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 little one had given me and the hubby, and I I was looking at it one night. And it said, I saw the word her in mother. And I realized, oh, because I'd been in this dark space. I didn't realize I was suffering from postpartum. Oh, you know, wow. I met my son. So when I saw the word her, I was like, that's interesting because I've lost her in becoming a mother. Wow. And I, you know, so many women can lose the her, who they are in whatever they are becoming or whoever they think they need to be or wherever they are at that time. And so whether you're becoming a mother, whether you're becoming a, you know, a, a professional woman or whether you're, okay. you know, mm -hmm. changing spaces and places, you know, if you're a college student becoming a professional, right. if, you know, you're, you're dealing with things, whatever you're becoming, um, a lot of that, her lives in that. So in my space as a creative, whether you're an actor, writer, director, even though it's spelled differently, direct her, her. right? Her lives in that space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, shout out to those teachers. I am not a teach her at all. <laughs> over. My son is going back there. Um, but whether you're a trailblaze her, a motivate her, highly fave her, a money maker, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a wealth build her, I tell people all the fine, find the her that lives in you and stop worrying about the her that's out there because social media has kind of um, skewed our, our idea of what her looks like. Because sis, you don't have to be her over there that's filtered out or that's bought and not naturally built. So find the authentic her, look in the mirror and say, I like her, I love her, and I want to be her, the her that's looking back at you. So we have the merchandise more so as an affirmation. Um, and we have, you know, the merch that will be tailor-made for you. So even though mine is what you call the creative, we have a mommy roll call. This is what I call my creative roll call. Right, um, right, right. Bottom it says shot caller because that's what I am. Right. Um, we have the creative roll call. We have the mother roll call. Um, you can create your own roll call based on all of the mantras that we have up. So I'm excited about it, but it's more so a movement with a message that's going to motivate, similar to Black Girls Rock. And authentically her, I just really want women to kind of embody that and know I love it. the best form of yourself is loving her. I love that. You know, it's so crazy because um, you are, your, your son is four, right? Yeah. Four. Yeah. Okay. And so my youngest is going to be 21 here in a couple of months, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. So wow, I had to learn who her is because I did that. I mean, I, I always was the boss chick, but I did everything for my kids. Everything was for my kids. And so when they, when my youngest graduated, I mean, she's graduating from college, girl, in June. I can't believe that. Anyway. Wow. So when she graduated from high school, I was devastated, you know, because I had lost her. her. And do you know how hard it is to find her? Honey, I'm telling you, where my glasses at? I, I was looking for her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So when I heard about your authentic her, Aww. I was like, oh my gosh. And it's so crazy because it's so relatable at every Thing because you the new mother, right? I am now I'm a grandmother. Now no, honey, you are what I can say a legendary mother, honey. <laughs> I yes. like that. Yes. And it's crazy because that's really where we're in different phases in our lives. So it's important right. to keep that her inside of that. You aren't you aren't really looking at it from a perspective of, you know, I mean, we can have Maya, Oprah, you know, Ava and all that on there. But I feel like my roll call, not that those women aren't amazing, but I want my roll call to represent me. Me. Right. You know? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. my name is not Oprah. Yes. <laughs> is Elizabeth. Now, I would love to I would love to be kin to Oprah. Right, because uh, I like to call her auntie. Hey auntie. Oh, right. oh. That part. <laughs> She's the true mother, honey. The godmother. Huh? Okay. Something. But you're <laughs> absolutely right. And in this it's the movement that we need and this is the time that we need it. Because you hit on a very important thing when you said the social media. You know, kids are killing themselves. Behind uh, social media, like these kids are committing suicide because people didn't like them on social yeah. media, that people never even knew them, you know? 
so scary. And that's the part where I really want people to stop looking to others for that validation, the blue checks, the follow, the follow hers, and, you know, really understand, you know, who you are and understand that your value and your worth resides in the, the very thing that you see every day. And you can be that her over there if you just stay right here. Right. Mm -hmm. I love that. Y'all hey. heard that, right? Stay right where you are. That's now, look, her. I'm, I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. because I was looking on the internet. You know how I be doing. You know how yes, I be doing. I know how you're doing it. <laughs> look, look, and, look, what are you doing? Look, people are texting me like, what is happening? What is happening? What, you know what's going on? I wanted to hear, because we were talking about Beyonce. I mean, first of all, for you guys who don't know, she is the boss chick. She has worked with so many amazing actors. Uh, she, cre she was the pioneer of reality show, right? Um, so as I was scrolling, I'm looking at the reality uh, stuff going on and all the BS, I guess. I don't even know what to really call it. What do you think about the reality shows that's going on now? Like, um, you know, the reality shows are just a platform for people to really express their true selves or so, you know, the authentic part of reality TV has changed since we've done our show. Wait, I was just to say that. Like, did you say they true selves? Their true selves, meaning they, their true selves and how they need to be portrayed or what they think their true oh, selves should you. be. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But the authentic self is is the part that's missing. I think when we did our reality show, um, no one really felt like it was a good space for us to be in because people did reality shows to restart their careers. Right. So our step into it was before Basketball Wise, before Love and Hip Hop, before there was any kind of salacious and ratchet television right. um, um, behavior. Uh, we we were on there with you know our client, a Hall of Famer, Terrell Owens, who had a brand already before right. reality TV. So reality TV didn't create him. Um, but what we realized was that it gave us a platform, and we were true trailblazers and pioneers in that space that did open up a forum. Um, and once they realized that salaciousness sold, they would ask us like, "Hey, can you guys you know disagree about this or that?" And I would say to them, "No." Like there's parts as a producer, we were executive producers of the show that we didn't want shown and we had that power. Right, um, right. So we kept our authentic selves. And although, you know, the trajectory has changed since us, I think the reason a lot of people remember us from the show is because we really were authentic, that we had a good brand that showcased black women in a, a very dominant, powerful role. Loved it, uh, yeah. Being, being, being leaders. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I remember that show. And people... Um, may not remember but it's terrell owens right that's Ter T terrell. terrell terrell owens the to show on vh was on for three seasons myself and my partner monique jackson monique, mm -hmm. we created produced and um starting the show and um we really were the first to to be women of color to um actually have a docuseries on um before all the other ones that you see now so and that's awesome that is awesome Thank and he you. still talk about you though he does i don't know <laughs> about us in the best way and and a uh, right look and, and as far as being a publicist you get alerts all the time look they're telling me look this is why we never can stop see people are like where are you um right. but i think the crazy part is we are gonna always be family um we're gonna all th that thread and that fabric of one another um and i don't ever want people to look at us and think that you know uh, we don't love each other he just has some unpacked trauma that he hasn't really dealt with. And we've known, we've known that for years. So, you right. know, a lot of times until you do the work, it comes out in different forms. And, you know, Terrell has always been the first to be the victim. And oh, uh, I know him. And what's so funny is I actually know him too. Uh, remember I lived out there. So you get it. I already know. Yeah, that's why I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but that, tell me. That, I'm going to always love him. And no matter yeah. what we do, I will always speak, you know, kind words from him. But definitely stern words like we did when we were on the T.O. show. I don't like his behavior, but definitely um, um, happy to say that we were a part of a, a, a span of his life that people got to see who he was authentically. And yeah. 
oh, oh, you see, I'm speechless right there. I'm like, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So, that is something. so tell us this. Give me a good story. You gave us a good story last time about Slick Rick. So mm -hmm. what is uh, um, that Beyonce story that we missed out on? Oh, gosh. You do know, you do you that's a hard one. That's, that's actually a hard one to, um, to, no, honey, that's how, the, uh, actually, my child is coming in. Tell him, hey. Uh, I apologize. Um, that story is very interesting. I, um, in a nutshell, real quick, before I have to jump, yeah, I yeah. Um, have been in PR for a while. So I was actually um, uh, working for a top PR company called Rogers and Callum PR. I was a young publicist. There was a group called Destiny's Child at the time that was out, and we were still taking Southwest flights. Um, and <laughs> I worked for Rogers and Callum that did the Grammys. So I was assigned to Destiny's Child because they were nominated. Um, so when you're assigned to um, talent for an award show, especially since our company did them, I got a chance to, to kind of meet the ladies and get a chance to know Beyonce at the time and Kelly and Michelle and all them. And, you know, we had a good bond. So when they got nominated and won and all that stuff, um, I then got swooped up and got a job at Def Jam. Uh, while at Def Jam, that was when Beyonce and Jay-Z were dating secretly. So as right. they were dating secretly, um, no one knew at the time they were dating. Of course, I did. And this was my first week on the job working at Def Jam under Russell Simmons. And I was in Houston uh, for an event with Scarface. And I was supposed to make sure that talent got to the venue. Okay. So Scarface, who is predictable it was Scarface it was Jay-Z it was Ludacris was a couple of other artists that were all there we went to a space called Papa Do's well oh, yeah. our car service was outside and they decide they want to take a bus public transportation I'm like excuse me they're like yeah it's gonna take the straight line right down to the venue and I was like uh no you're not that's not <laughs> happening Beyonce was like, yo, like, I've never done, I've never been on a bus before. Like, that was so cool. I was like, no, it's not. No, no, no. So the bus stop was in front of Papa Do's. <laughs> lose it. We get on the bus. Everybody's losing their minds. Beyonce had a cap on. No one noticed. Everyone noticed Jay-Z because he was the popular star. And when I Correct. tell you things changed, they changed. And I thought I was going to lose my job. By the time we got to the end of the bus line where we were going, it was a crowd of people. At this time, people were doing their sky tail two-way pagers. And I thought I was going to get fired. Beyonce <laughs> was like, I'll never forget this moment. I've never been on a bus before, uh, 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 you know, public transportation. Just, yes. And I remember her saying to me, this is one day I'll not forget. I have a picture of it. But more importantly, I thought I was going to get fired because the next day we had a call. And they were like, who the fuck put these talent, put our <laughs> artists on a, on a bus? I was like, oh my God. They were like, oh, it was a new publicist they hired in, in LA. And they was like, who is it? They was like, it's Keita Williams. And Russell was like, yo, Keita. And Kevin Louse was like, that was a fucking amazing idea. What a way to relate to the public. Everybody uh, are talking about it. I was like, yeah, they are. That was <laughs> So my Beyonce story is that we rode the bus together for the first time. And she's the reason that I got um, pretty much the best uh, job perk ever. Uh, the following day instead of being fired. So um, awesome. I was very, very, very um, scared and terrified. But that's one story I cannot forget. And every time I see her, I'm like, that bus ride, girl. That, that bus, bus ride. ride. You want to take the bus? You want to take? She can't even do it anymore now. Thank you so yes. much for taking time out. Thank Before you, you leave, though, uh -huh. tell everybody where they can find you. Yes, you can find me at Kita, K-I-T-A, Pub Diva, D-I-V-A. And you can go over to authenticallyher.co. That's .co, not .com. For all the merch affirmations, all the things we're doing to make sure that you're loving the best version of your her. Love it. Thank you, baby. Bye. You. you were Love the you. best. Mwah, mwah. Thanks for tuning in today and listening to the girl, Kita. She's awesome. Look, stay tuned. Go to the website, misfit1.com, and see who's coming up next. You will not be disappointed. Till next week, you guys, stay fit.